So this is yet another example of electron rich moving to electron poor. Uh, today we're going to be uh, doing reducing agents. Reducing agents is just really adding hydrogen. You're adding an H minus and an H plus. Uh, you're adding hydrogen and turning either a ketone or an aldehyde to an alkyl. So there are two major reducing agents, lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride, and uh, I just flashed that periodic table there to show that uh, boron and aluminum are both in group 3 if you go past the transition metals and uh, so they have something in common let's look for some similarities here uh, they're both actually uh, uh, going to help carry a hydrogen nucleophile so so these two guys actually carry a hydrogen nucleophile the reason why they need to be a carrier is because hydrogen is too small nucleophile needs to be uh, big enough uh, to conduct what's called polarizability. That's in another video. But these, this tiny atom, how does the tiny stand on the wrist? It can't be a good nucleophile. It can't hold that negative charge. So it needs a boat, and that's what a reducing agent is. It needs a boat. So this is the SS reducing agent here. So lithium aluminum hydride is going to be a boat for H-. minus. All these other guys, the AL and the H3, and they really don't matter. And even the counter ion, the Li+, plus, which helps it to uh, be easy to handle in the lab. Salts are solids at room temperature. And same thing with uh, sodium borohydride. Uh, salts are solids at room temperature. They're easy to handle in the lab. They have high melting points, but it's really, all this is really just to carry that H-. minus. That's what reducing agents are. So that H- minus, uh, has, a, it has a boat now to make a journey to a delta plus an electron poor carbon. It's always about minuses and uh, moving to pluses. That's all chemistry is. The moving of electrons to places where they're needed. So we're going to reduce the ketone here. We're going to have lithium aluminum hydride. That H minus in its boat is going to attack the electron poor carbonyl carbon. Push the electrons up. And we're going to add water. A weak acid, which is a proton donor. Uh, water is going to behave as an acid. It's a proton donor. And this step here to protonate that O minus. So the O minus is going to move, grab the. Uh, it's going to behave as a base. Going to grab the proton from the water. And again, it's always minuses moving to pluses. That's all chemistry really is. Hopefully, you can see that pattern. I put it in some of my other videos. And final product. You know, if you're keeping track of your H's, uh, you don't have to draw that red H in. Um, but I put it in colors so you can just kind of keep track that the ketone forms a secondary alcohol. So you're adding H minus, then you're adding H plus. Let's try another example using sodium borohydride with an aldehyde. So we're going to reduce an aldehyde to obtain a primary alcohol. And uh, yeah, you might see sodium borohydride with methanol. It still behaves as an acid. Acid is a proton donor. Uh, that's the concept. Detailed in some of the other videos, but again, with this chemistry stuff, you just look for patterns. It's really just the same thing repeating over and over again. The H minus is going to move to the electron poor carbonyl carbon, break that double bond, push electrons up. O minus is going to grab a proton from the methanol. Here, the methanol is going to behave as an acid. Acid is a proton donor. Acid is a proton donor. Minus is moving to pluses. Boom, you have the primary alcohol. So, aldehyde. It's reduced to form primary alcohol. If you're doing some bookkeeping, you can keep track of the colors there, the protons. But uh, you know you don't need to draw in those two H's by themselves. You can just draw in the uh, newly formed ethanol molecule there. All right, peace.